that it's so intergenerational and also it's like inter typical there you never know who's going to be a bike kind of person there's not just this particular ethnic of person that is a bicycle person so I'll get calls that from very interested people who are very supportive or have bikes to give or have bikes they want to learn how to fix and they might be from some of the wealthiest uh, uh, areas or, or, or communities of town but then we've also got the neighborhood children we've got little bitty children's bikes um, so I've just really enjoyed that piece of it that it seems to collect people that might in any other circumstance never happen to be sheltered and uh, man one thing it's done for me over the last year it, it it's really obliterated my view of different class structures um, because a lot of the people that come to the shop are people that are here in the church. And um, I just had a lot of preconceived notions about people. Um, people older than me, people more um, conservative than me. Um, I had a lot of preconceived notions about the kids in the neighborhood. Um, I really addressed some, um, just some um, really base uh, fear of, of people outside of my circle and and then when you work in that you have to make a decision whether or not you want to confront that and um, and this has been the best environment for me to confront those things and so I've learned a lot about bikes but even more I've learned about people ideally I want a bike shop where people come in like the kids in the neighborhood that work at the bike shops can come in and they're knowledgeable comprehensive training courses where we can teach people and they can supervise and everybody can learn and you know you can know that Saturday Sundays and, and other days that you can come in and fix your flat without having to go somewhere and charge you know fifteen dollars or you can learn to fix it yourself and have access to tools. You know I wanted the fact that there's a shop with three complete workstations that I you know and you can go instead of sitting in your driveway banging on things with a hammer that you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Which is a wonderful thing, but it's nice also to be able to learn with using the right tools. And... We're here. So we established ourselves on that level by helping people out. You know, by saying we are this resource center. We do have bikes for people to come and get, and they came and got them. You know? And so we put a lot of people on bikes initially. We taught a lot of workshops. We helped out a few kids. And so people kind of saw, okay, this is, this is really cool. And we we accomplished a lot just through that. But we didn't what we didn't do is establish a long-term program with preset goals that were gonna be seen through to the very end because there was there was there was just too much happening at once and not enough people to help. We finally got the three workstations totally stocked with tools and set up so that we could start training volunteers, which is what we're in the midst of right now. It doesn't, it doesn't get any better because everybody feels like they've laid a hand down to create something. You know, because everybody's contributing, hopefully, just as much as everybody else in the in, in the project to make it happen. And and you really gain respect for people because you see them working hard, and you respect the fact that they're looking out for you by, by doing what they need to do. You know, and and uh, I've I've seen I, I've seen this model build relationships better than I have with any other. The zine room, where um, zines, which are small little publications that individuals put out um, of their own accord, free of a printing press. That's one that's by um, an old roommate, Andrea. Welcome to the living room. <laughs> Many projects have <clears throat> uh, come to life here, including, but not limited to, study circles. Sorry. Women's Action Coalition, which... 
uh, which put on the very first Southern Girls Convention here in Memphis, Tennessee. Hey, it, there's a, it's the Liberated Existence Library, is that right? Mm -hmm. And there was also a cafe at the time. This library used to be sort of a part of a coffee shop, is that right? Mm -hmm. That was called the Coffee Cellar. The Coffee Cellar. And we have a lot of different books about kind of everything, but mostly mm -hmm. political and anarchical, as well as gender studies and uh, sociology and this women's room. studies. This room used to be the craft room, but, and uh, it was before that, after that. Sometime it was the... It, it was, started as a craft room. It was a craft room. It was also a little bit of a cafe. It was also a little bit of a bedroom for a while. And now it's a computer room. And the uh, plant germination, plant germination and fish aquarium area. <laughs> And pet food place. Distribution center. Distribution center. <laughs> this dining room here used to have the bulk bins that are now located in the Midtown Food Co-op. We used to order our own uh, bulk items from the Ozark Cooperative Warehouse in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Um, we were a part of a buyer's club before the co-op started. And now we are all proud members and hard workers at the Midtown Food Co-op. Go dear. Um, <laughs> also, Food Not Bombs has run in and out of here. It kind of started here. Well, the Memphis chapter started here a long time ago when it first it started in Douglas House. Started in the Douglas House, and now it, it was here. And then it was at uh, where the Peace and Justice Center used to be, and now it's at First Congo Church. You got to preach two hours to get somebody out of one bologna sandwich. And it, it might be ice cold out there. My children right here, what's the name of y'all group? Food Not Bombs. Food Not Bombs. Do Not Bomb. Food Not Bombs. Sign right there. Food, food Not Bombs. All right, these are my children. My children don't even act, act for nothing. They just come out here, and they, I mean, they great. They got a heart, but people disrespect them. And I stepped in, and I told them, these are my children. These are God-sent children. And I want everybody to know, you can come on down once or twice a week, these children. <laughs> Do you see this as a constructive, resourceful thing? I see it as a, a really good start towards a huge problem 